Scientists have discovered a revolutionary new treatment that makes you live longer, it enhances your memory, it makes you more creative, it makes you look more attractive, it makes you slim and lowers your food cravings, it protects you from cancer and dementia, it wards off colds and the flu, it lowers your risk of heart attack stroke and not to mention diabetes, you'll feel happier, less depressed, less anxious. Are you interested? If so, keep listening. Practically right now, the number one thing that actually does all this stuff is sleep. And sleep is a key determinant in how good of sleep you are physically, how much fat you store and where, how good you are at making decisions, how productive you are, how intelligent you are. And in other words, this isn't the kind of stress that makes you stronger, it's the kind of stress that makes you dumber, fatter, slower, and with a smaller bank account. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Alex Ramosi. I am the owner, managing partner, of acquisition.com. We have a portfolio of companies that's about $85 million a year. And one of the key questions I get a lot is what do you do at night in order to have a nighttime routine? And so I have assembled a large amount of habits over my life. I think I counted them over 55 that I'm going to go with you. And a lot of them are as tiny as put, you know, take a piece of salt before you go to bed so that you don't pee at night. Like there's tiny little hacks that I've developed over time that I've acquired from learning. And I heavily ripped off this presentation from a presentation that I gave with Dr. Trevor Cashy, my good friend, at one of our licensee meetings. And so without further ado, I want to explain to you why this is such an important part of making money. And that might sound crazy to you, but I will explain. And so the reasons for entrepreneurs in terms of why we need to have good sleep schedule and good sleep hygiene and good sleep routines, et cetera, is really two main things. Number one is impulse control and number two is intelligence. So from an impulse control perspective, I'm sure you guys have already heard a lot of self-development books and know about the lizard brain and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, as it turns out, a sleep deprived brain basically has, you, has us performing as a drunk person. And so it gives us the emotional stability of a drunk human being. And so the, the the fancy connection between you being a lizard and the part of your brain that says, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that gets weaker. And so your ability to put on the brakes goes down. And so it doesn't inherently make you a negative person, but it makes you more reactive and more prone to be overreactive or emotional when you ideally shouldn't be in a business scenario. Second, is intelligence. So our ability to learn new things. The more you sleep, the more your brain clears out useless information from short term and stores it as useful information into the long term. So if you don't sleep as much, you have a goofy short term memory while you're on wake on top of a terrible capacity to move information from short term to long term while you sleep. Not only that, uh, what you do to manage to learn during a sleep deprived state erodes away each night. So even if you get a regular time to sleep, your ability to store, learn and recall information is cut almost in half with as little as two hours of sleep deprivation. All right, so to drive this home, your ability to learn is even paired with fitful sleep. That is to say, sleeping enough, but if your sleep is poor quality, you are still doomed to be learning challenged. And this can mean anything from the ghost. Um, in other words, if you don't sleep as much or as well as you could be, you're dumber because of it. And as a result, you will make less money. That's my case. Now, I didn't really like any of this stuff in general because I'm not a big believer in superstitions and whatnot. And I will cover some of my beliefs around this topic. But my first wake up call was when I uh, actually had a client in my first business. Uh, I snapped at a customer and she was like, you can't do that. I realized what I had said and the person had a very normal request and I just like really bit their head off. Um, she was like, you're not gonna be able to run a business like this. And that was when I realized I needed to change some stuff. And so that kind of began the journey for me down this hundred million dollar sleep compendium of little tips and tricks that have served me well. Over 55 that I will cover in this video. Now, that being said, I broke this down into kind of four major buckets. Um, beliefs around sleep that have served me well, the environment that is conducive to the best high quality sleep, three intake in terms of all things that you put into your body or directly apply to your body that have improved my ability to sleep. And then finally, uh, habits that surround sleep and activity in general that I generally um, do. And so I didn't really think that I had so many of these until I started to write them down for this video because it was a question that I was getting in my FAQs on the gram. And so without further ado, let's rock and roll. Okay, so here are my eight beliefs around sleep. Number one is do not create superstition. All right, so you have to remove the have to, must, need to, should, uh, from like, if I don't get eight hours of sleep, ah, right? Like if you, if you think that way, so as much as I just said everything's important, I'm now gonna just contradict myself in saying that I think that these beliefs are more important than the rest of the stuff I'm gonna cover this video. All right, because the thing is, is like, still think about this as an 80-20. Like if 80% of the time you're good and 20% of the time you're not, it happens, right? We're human and everyone wants to be perfect and no one is, and then for that reason, we get upset with ourselves. That being said, whenever you say things like, I have to, I must, I should, you're actually creating a threat to yourself in the universe because the next thing is, or what? Like I have to get this sleep comma or what, right? Or I have to follow 
my routine comma or what, right? And if you fill out that or what, all of a sudden you realize that some of the beliefs you have are kind of silly. And so one of the worst things you can do after this presentation, this is a disclaimer and a warning, is take all of this, all the stuff I'm gonna show you as doctrine and say, if I don't do all these 55 things, I am A, a terrible person, I will have terrible sleep, I will make less money and I will suck. Don't do that, all right? If you can take one or two of these things to improve your sleep, on 10% of your nights of sleep for the year, it's a win, right? So look at it on 365 nights. If we can, by the end of this video, increase your quality of sleep by 10 or 20%, just from one 20 minute thing that you do one time and consume it, that is a amazing return on time and attention, all right? So, so just as a big disclaimer. Number two, as much as I just said that sleep is so important, a belief that has served me well is thinking I don't need a lot of sleep. Now, in doing that, what it does is that my anxiety around sleep is not really present at all. Like I don't obsess about sleep. I have done all of the things that I'm gonna cover in this video and I do these things ahead of time so that I don't have to think about it. Um, but like, I don't, I, I don't allocate a lot of time towards sleep stuff in general, especially a lot of mental effort because a lot of people struggle with sleeping and I understand that and I am not one of them. But I think part Part of it is because of the 55 things I'm about to show you, which I have now covered two of them. Now, the, the, the third point here is I like to have the belief that I could sleep anywhere, right? So we want to create our sleep dojo, right? Our, our, our ideal scenarios where we want to sleep, but we want to have the capacity, the flexibility, the adaptability to be able to sleep on a floor with nothing, right? And so it's balancing these two ideas of like, I want to increase the likelihood of my, my success or ideal outcome while also in no way needing to, having to musting this thing. Right? I'm, I don't have to do this thing. I prefer to do this thing. All right. Number four, this is a belief that has served me well. 90% of the benefit that you get of being asleep is from being just in a dark room with your eyes closed. And so the reason you might be like, well, I don't know if that's sciencey. Hold on. If you've ever been tired in the middle of the day and you just close your eyes for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and you feel completely like re regenerated or re-energized, it's because you get a lot of benefits just from being in a dark room with your eyes closed. And so I have taken that as a belief of mine because sometimes when you have this anxiety of like, I have to fall asleep quickly, I have to get more hours, I have to count down the clock, like all of those things decrease the likelihood that you're going to sleep. And so for me, that's why I say I don't need a lot of sleep. I just remember that's 80-20. I don't have to be superstitious about it. I am the type of person that can be successful and energized and succeed. Even if I sleep, I don't sleep at all because I have a history and a past of knowing that I can do that. And so it decreases my need for having to sleep, which then in so doing actually allows me to sleep more. Number five, working all day helps. <laughs> so so I, I never really had any issues sleeping, but I especially didn't have issues sleeping when I <laughs> was starting my first businesses because I worked literally all day long and I could sleep standing up. And so if you ever in these situations where you are struggling, I do think that just literally working harder, doing more stuff, doing more thought consuming work, doing more physical activity helps. And so if you're not, if you're not doing that stuff, maybe you can take a, a real ego, egoless look at yourself and say like, can I be working harder? Are the things that I'm doing right now not engaging and that could be in your work that could be whatever and in so doing is it impairing my sleep because i'm not getting enough of a spike during the day which is not creating enough of a trough at night because the actual worst case scenario of what it looks like to not sleep well is that usually you're groggy during the day and then you're groggy at night but you're never fully asleep and you're never fully awake so what you want is the highest peaks during the day and the lowest troughs at night and if you're not getting the high peaks you need to create the high peaks so that you can give yourself the opportunity to crash number six tracking i stopped doing it so i used to track at one of those rings or a band or whatever, I don't remember, I've tried, I've tried apps, I've tried different things. But what ended up happening in, and I, I, I'll tell you, I haven't solved this problem for me. I get, I'm too competitive. I'm competitive with myself and I see, and every day I wanted to, you know, break a new sleep record, but you don't hit sleep records, right? Like, but I am an incremental improver by nature. And so whenever I saw that stuff, I ended up thinking and obsessing and I would try not to move at all because I didn't want to move my phone, which would fuck the app up. Um, and so I, I basically threw out all the apps and I slept better as a result because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. All right. Number seven, don't judge yourself. Not good or bad as humans. Animals don't need perfect sleep to survive. Think about the amount of times that animals have to move in the middle of the night because the predator comes by. Like all of these things are ideal. They are, we don't have to be perfect. And judging ourselves is usually the source of the vast majority of the anxiety that we have is that we say, we are bad sleepers. Therefore, I'm a bad person. I, I, have, I don't have mental health. That's great, blah, 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 blah. Which then you can ask the question, why do I need to have great mental health, right? Why is why does it make me a bad person, right? And so you can ask other questions around the threats that you're impl implying with your must have to statements. And then finally, and this is a, a belief that has served me well, this is kind of on the border of habit, but it felt better in this bucket. Treating weekdays and weekends as the same thing 
is one of the easiest and biggest things that you can do in the beginning of your kind of entrepreneurial career because you probably work on weekends anyways. So they are probably your weekdays as much. They're just weekdays without meetings. And so you can actually just get more work done. And so for me, my most productive work actually happens on the weekends. And so that's when I want to get my best sleep, right? And so I definitely don't want to change the way I sleep and when I wake up during those times or treat them any differently. Okay. So without further ado, that is the first of the four buckets. So beliefs are now covered. Sorry, I didn't put check marks in this thing. I figured you guys would care more than I just crank this out for you. Those are the beliefs. And that is my big disclaimer before I dive into this, because people will love to say, oh my God, if I don't do all these 50 things, I'm going to suck. And I don't want you to do that. Take one or two of them, take three or four of them, implement them over time. Maybe one of these things is like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. And awesome. We'll do. Okay. Number one, make the room cold. And if it looks like it's small on the, on the form, on the sheet here, it's because I have a lot of them on this list. So here's nine environment hacks. All right. These are the things that you can do. And then here's the nice thing about the environment hacks. You can do them once and then never worry about it again. Like I love do it once and then get benefits forever. This is one of these things. So make sure that you have good ventilation. If you haven't fixed your AC unit and, it and it's not strong enough, if you haven't fixed the insulation in the room, fix it. You'll sleep better. It is worth it. No matter how much money you make for the life benefit you get, because if you sleep better, you tend, I'll give you a, an interesting stat that I don't have in the presentation. One more hour of sleep creates more happiness for the average American than an extra $70,000 a year. Okay. Crazy. So think about that. Like you can try to make more money or you can just sleep a little bit more, right? Or a little bit better. So number one, make the room cold. Typical is 68 to 72. We sleep at 67. I like it cold, I run hot, and I tend to have like a sheet on and Layla has like two blankets, all right? So make sure that the room is cold enough for you. If it's not, it's just miserable. Number two, have a house plant in the sleeping room. Everyone needs a friend, right? Something alive is nice. Now I'll tell you at the very end of this little nine, nine part section, all the things that I do, I do number one, I don't do number two, and I'll explain at the end in a second. But number three, get rid of all the lights in the room, aside for the overhead lights, obviously. So don't do the charging stuff, LEDs, anything of that nature, not even your phone in the sleeping room, all right? So get out the screens, TVs, computer, get it out of the room, all right? Keep your phone in another room if you can. It will keep your anxiety levels also a tad bit lower because all of your anxiety comes from your phone. So if you can get it out of the room, getting out of the sleeping area will help you from a headspace perspective, okay? Number four, get blackout curtains or eye mask or better yet, do both. And you want to be able to like, it should be able to be pitch black in the room in the middle of the day. Like that's how isolated it is. Like just having curtains isn't good enough because there's the things on the sides. And I'm telling you, I know this sounds minor, but like the depth of your, like these are all, you do this one time and you just get better sleep forever. So like to me, one time fix for long-term benefit, worth it. All right, number five. And you know what, as a side note, a lot of people don't do this stuff in their businesses either. It's like if you can if you can front load the work and then just get enduring compounding returns on, on, on the back end, why not do it? Okay. So number five, get a weighted blanket. Anecdotal evidence suggests 10% of your body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, get a 20 pound blanket. Make sense? There's actually a ton of research that supports this, which is pretty cool. It's rare that like new stuff actually comes out that's useful. Weighted blankets. Pretty cool. Number six, get a nice mattress. All right. I can give you the, the stats, you know, the, the mattress salesman pitch. But basically you're spending eight hours of your day, right, in bed. It's like a third of your day. It's like we spend millions of dollars on a house and we spend like a grand on a mattress like come on it just like it you don't even spend that much time in your car like think about it i i agree with the pitch and i think it makes complete sense like there's not many expenditures that will increase the quality of your life and your productivity so much as just getting a mattress that isn't shitty number seven this is a great one this is actually one that i started we started doing like six six or seven years ago and it's just been really great and i used to make fun of layla for it but now i actually really like it having a white noise machine or a white noise app on your phone there's a zillion free ones or getting used to earplugs if you're used to that because we right now like where i'm at right now we're on the strip so like i have plenty of noise and light around me so we have blackout curtains and we've got ear earplugs if we need them which i only really have to do on like big concert nights because a white noise machine covers all that and so like if you and you and your partner you make noise or you have have all the little creaks and things that wake you up in the middle of the night, all of that goes away with a white noise machine. So like for me, this is one of those things like if you get used to in the beginning because I didn't have it, Layla used to sleep with one and I didn't and I started sleeping together and so I had to get used to sleeping with white noise. But now that we do have it, it's actually awesome because when you go to hotels, when you're in different areas and you have this thing that you can't control from an environmental perspective, just having white noise just blocks everything out, which is great. All right, you can even have a fan and point it against the wall. It doesn't really matter. Eight, um, I have an orthotic pillow. So uh, for me, I have like terrible neck shit. And so I sleep with an orthotic pillow, like wraps around my back like a U. It's like a $200 pillow. I'll see if I can put links in the in the description from some of the stuff that I reference. But anyways, getting a good pillow is important. So like try them out. And like, here's, here's a fun one. Buy five. If you're like, oh, I'm gonna spend five, I'm gonna buy five pillows. Yes, buy five pillows, figure out the one you like the most and then toss the rest. And you're like, what, waste? Yes, life is short, sleep on a good pillow. 
All right, number nine, sleeping buddies. Consider separate rooms. I know this is crazy and, and, and absolutely against common, common whatever. Um, Layla and I actually didn't sleep in the same bedroom for like a year and a half. And it, and believe it or not, you can still have sex if you don't sleep in the same bed. The same way you did before you were married, when you didn't sleep in the same bed. I know, crazy. And so uh, you'll also probably like each other more if you're both sleeping a little bit better. But I actually used to have terrible, terrible, terrible breathing. I still kind of do, which is why I wear these patches, which we'll cover in a second. And so we did that for a while. I got my, my sleep thing fixed. And this is one of those trade-offs where like, technically, we should continue to sleep in separate bedrooms. But life-wise, Layla prefers me to be in bed with her. And so that is what we do, all right? So these are all, like I said, these are not have-tos. These are like, would be nice if you can do it as a one-time fix, all right? So those are the nine environmental hacks. Now. You might be like, well, what do I take from this? I do all the stuff I just mentioned, except I don't have any plants because I don't like life. I want death to stare me in the face every night before I go to bed. I just haven't gotten around to it. But there's plenty of uh, research that su suggests that's a good thing. I don't do the weighted blanket right now. I think it's because we, we moved and I just didn't take the blanket with me. When I slept in my own bed, I had a weighted blanket. It's just been kind of annoying with Layla because then it's like, it's just kind of a pain and I need a heavier one than she does. And so like logistically for me, it was a pain. So that's why I don't do it. But I do, it, it is beneficial and it, and it does help, I think. It also makes you move less because it's just heavy. And so it kind of keeps you more still, which I think is help, is helpful as well. Uh, we don't sleep in separate beds because uh, post nurse surgery, like I mentioned. And I do have my phone in the room. All right, but I don't have all the other lights. I do all the blackout stuff, all the cold stuff, all the other things I just said, we do. I do have my phone in the room though but there are no like alarm clock lights or anything else. And my phone is down against the thing and I probably shouldn't do it, but I haven't had an issue sleeping. So that goes to show you that you can just get half the shit right and still be fine. Okay. So beliefs and environment, check, check one, two, going to number three, which is intake. This one will be fun. These are all the things you get to do to your body and imbibe yourself. All right. Number one, if you have supplements and things like that, that you want to take, put it next to your bed or by your toothbrush. It's the easiest way that I have found to not have to forget this stuff because I am inherently, I tend to be a forgetful person. All right, or I, I just don't remember things as frequently as I probably should. Okay, so I use Sleep Multiplier. It's a product by Prestige Labs. I probably should have a link or a logo. I used to own majority of the company. I still continue to take the product. It's exceptional. If you are the type of person who tracks it, take it for 30 days and look at your sleep source before and after. And for everyone, it's not a sedative, all right? You're not gonna like immediately take it and just like pass out. But what you will notice is that your average sleep scores on a 30 day rolling period will be better. I guarantee it. All right. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not the majority of the company, so I can say that. But uh, it is expensive, but it is 100% worth it. It is so, so, so worth it. Um, like, what do you pay for? In, in, like, people buy courses, they buy all these things when you could spend like three bucks a day and have 20% increased output because you sleep better. Like, to me, it's not even a question. Okay. Let's get to the things that we're going to try and help prevent from things that fragment sleep. So, peeing. A lot of people get up in the middle of the night one, two, three times to pee. So, here is where we can actually nip, nip this in the butt. I used to do this. So, like, let me help. Number one, you can take salt tabs before you go to bed. All right, so if you take, if you have salt tabs next to your bed, you can take them and I drink it with Gatorade Zero rather than water because there's salts in there as well. And what it happens is you, it constricts the amount of water. You like, you bloat, right? But the thing is, is like, don't worry. It, like if you get on a cycle, you'll pee it out. You're not gonna look bloated, all right? But what happens is it, it will restrict the amount that you'll pee for a short period of time, all right? And so you might actually be able to make it through the night without having to pee if you take the extra salt, all right? That's kind of the idea. I already said the Gatorade water. And as, as a side note, and this is something that I've just developed over time, is like I eat at the same time every day. So I eat my breakfast at the same time. I eat lunch at the same time. I eat dinner at the same time. And the more you can get in that habit, the more regular your digestion gets, the more regular your bowel movements get. But also as a result of that, you have less uh, less variety, <laughs> which comes down to you sleep better because there's less like kind of variables that are affecting your sleep, right? So if you have, anyone's had like crazy indigestion because you had really hot Thai one night <laughs> and you had it two hours later than you normally do, well, you're not probably not gonna sleep as well. And that's just like, is this Thai really worth that? I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But if it like sets you back like a day or two because you didn't sleep that well, Eh, to me, it's not really worth the, the Thai food. All right, now breathing. And this one is a special section for me because I have struggled with this a ton my whole life since I was in eighth grade, I couldn't breathe that well. So there's 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 three main things that come to breathing. So I'm gonna go a little bit on a tangent here because I've done a lot of work and spent a lot of money on this stuff. There is your allergies, so your level of congestion. There's the, the shape of your nostrils, right? And there's the stuff that's inside of it. So you have like the shape of your nostrils, if you have things that are impeding it and then you have congestion, all right? So those are kind of like the three variables. And so if you have, I'm forgetting the, the name, they're the things that they're like these globules, I can't remember the name inside um, of, your, of, your, of, your, of your sinus and your, and your nasal cap cavity. If you can get those removed surgically, which you can, it'll improve your breathing. I don't know why this got, got all zoomy. 
Let's see if we can get back. Here we go. And the easiest thing, like besides doing the surgeries and whatnot that you can do is what I'm gonna cover in this little breathing thing, okay? No strips, number one, absolute lifesaver. They're awesome. You can look on Amazon, go grab whatever. I'll have the links to the ones that I use. Like the reason I wear these is because I sleep in them and I continue to breathe great in them and that's why I do it. And when I couldn't breathe at all, this is the only way I could sleep. And when I, after the surgery, I went from being able to sleep okay and fine-ish without them and now I just sleep even better with it. Now I'll give you a hack that I don't have listed here that if you don't have these or like, let's say you go out and you travel and you forgot them or whatever. I'm telling like I've, I've been doing this for years. So if you fall asleep, you can fall asleep on your hand like this. And so what happens is the, like you don't have to, you're not actively pulling something, but your thumb is always gonna be straight, right? And so if you fall asleep like this, it actually will keep one of your nostrils open. Like that's how I had to sleep for like 10 years before I found out about these strips, all right? Highly recommend. Next thing, creams and sprays. So like there are there are nasal sprays. I think uh, salt sprays work. I don't like doing any kind of drugs and medication stuff because I don't like to be dependent on anything. But if you have those things, put those beside your bed. Like I said, salt sprays work well. And I actually put cream on my face when I remember to uh, so that hopefully I don't look old and gray in a year. Uh, peppermint oil stuff. Uh, I think I just put it on top of my mustache. If you put it too close inside the rim, it starts to burn. So I just put it like right on my on my stash or my upper lip, and that seems to work okay for me. And I only use that now in like extreme situations. I don't normally. And then neti pots for people who um, like that thing uh, work well for people from a breathing perspective. But for me, the big one is the nose, nasal strips and how I sleep for breathing. Okay, now. Those are the things that you can start doing. But you're like, man, Alex, it sounds like a lot of stuff to start doing. Well, let me tell you things that you can stop doing. Number one, and this is a huge one, especially with entrepreneurs. We love the stims, I get it. But try and cut it after 10 a.m. So like, sorry, like, don't don't drink them after 10. Uh, it will affect your sleep. People are like, oh, I can drink a zillion things of caffeine and pass right out. It means that you are completely, like, you're, it means that you're not receptive to them anymore, which means you're like not getting the adrenal boost that you want from it and you have become sensitized to it because you have such rolling amounts of caffeine in your system at all times that you never even get it out. All right, so you have to, you have to, you have to pull the plug on this because the half-life of caffeine is six hours. Half-life. So let's say you take a gram of caffeine. That's a thousand milligrams. That's a lot of caffeine. Six hours later, you have 500. That's still a lot of caffeine. Six hours later, you have 250. Still a lot of caffeine. That's two coffee cups. Six hours later, right? You have 120, which is one cup of coffee. But now we've already done half-life six, 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 six. So that's four sixes. It's 24 hours. We already covered a day and you still have a cup of coffee in your system. So you have to think about the half-life of, of, of the thing that you're drinking. So if you drink a cup of coffee in the morning, 12 hours later, it'll be it'll be at a quarter of what you were. So if you had 120, it, you have 30 milligrams of caffeine still in your system, all right, 12 hours later. And if you're sleeping 18 hours later, which you should be, right? I should using loosely here for ideal sleep scenarios. That means that you're now at 15 milligrams, which for most people would be okay. And so that's why how much you take throughout the day, even the timing thing, like if you take a gram in the morning, it will affect your sleep at night because the half-life is still like taking 500 milligrams six hours later. Think about this when you're when you're when you're thinking about stimulants altogether. If you're if you're if you're one of those people trouble sleeping, I would say I would suggest try not to do it and suffer for the five days and then restart, you know, re-kickstart your, your sleeping habits. All right, number two, have your last meal two hours before bed. I covered this with the peeing thing, but like, just don't. If you eat right before bed, you'll usually have to do some more bowel stuff um, or pee or whatever, and it also can affect your digestion. It can increase your body temperature, all those things if you do it right before bed. Number three, stop drinking out within four hours of bed. So ideally, if you're gonna drink, do, do it as a day party rather than going late into the night. And as a side note, you actually end up being more hungover from the fact that you fucked up your sleep more than the alcohol anyways. But as a, as a side note, there's tons of stuff on alcohol. You probably already know that, but just as a reminder. And then stop drinking liquids three hours before going to bed, right? Uh, like if you do that, then you can, ideally you front load all your drinking in the morning. So when you wake up, drink a bunch of water. And then that way you drink less over the day and you pee more. So your balance between drinking and peeing, drink a lot more than you pee in the beginning of the day. And then you, drink less and less and less and pee throughout the end of the day so that overnight you wake up and then you're really thirsty and then you do it again, right? Well, you don't want us to flip that habit where you drink a ton right before you go to bed and then you're peeing all while you're trying to sleep and then you wake up and then you don't drink, right? So just flip the flip the cycle and the nice thing is you start, once you start doing this once, it's very easy to stick with because your body will just do it naturally. Number five, avoid medicines that delay or disrupt your sleep, all right? So um, a lot of these different things can disrupt your sleep patterns. So like, that's why I don't like taking antihistamine things or things, I just don't like taking meds in general on a regular basis before bed. This is not medical advice. I'm not a medical doctor. All the stuff you already know. Uh, I'm saying these are things that have worked well for me and I try not to become dependent on anything. My two cents. I do everything that I just mentioned, except I only have the mental health for extreme circumstances and I don't use a neti pot because I hate it and it burns my nose and I'm a bitch about it. Okay, that's that. Cool. So beliefs, environment, intake, check, check, check. Number four is the habits. All right. So there are 
13 habits that we're going to cover and let's rock and roll with them. So number one, I should have made these uh, as, as stepwise, but I guess I left this whole list out. Um, AM sleep, at least 20 minutes, preferably 30 minutes. Get an hour of total sunlight during the day if you can. And I think this is great for a work break thing. Like after you eat lunch, go walk, right? It's an easy thing to do. Go walk and talk, take phone calls, whatever. It works. Take a short walk before bed. I like this from, I usually walk after I eat. So just FYI, after I eat lunch and after I eat dinner, I walk and that's kind of my jam. And so that's an easy way to implement this. From a workout perspective, don't work out two hours before you go to bed because your body temperature stays elevated for up to two hours. So don't do that or you will mess up your sleep. Screens off. This is just a general reminder yet again from a habit perspective. All right, two hours before bed. Now, I'll tell you the stuff that I do versus don't do in these habits, but these are the things that generally I have collected over my years as things that have helped me sleep better so I can make more dollars. Number five, go to bed between 9 and 11, set an alarm. So here's a common one that people don't do is that People love to have wake-up alarms, but they don't have go-to-bed alarms. You should have a go-to-bed alarm and not a wake-up alarm. If you have the right go-to-bed alarm, you will wake up naturally at the time that you should wake up. I know, crazy. And so if you need more sleep, you'll sleep more. And if you need less sleep, you'll sleep less, right? Beautiful thing about the body, all right? And as a side note with napping, and I'm a fan, I am somebody who likes to nap. It's fine. Try not to nap after two o'clock and try not to nap for longer than 30 minutes because it'll mess stuff up. So for me, I set my timer at 20 and I know that I go into the, the thing with the mindset that if I don't fall asleep at all and I have my eyes closed in a dark room for, for 20 minutes, I get 90% of the benefits without even having to go to sleep, which actually ends up decreasing my anxiety around the sleeping overall. And then I end up actually falling asleep in like five seconds. The next seven, and I probably should have gotten the numbers to start at eight, but so be it. If you can, sleeping on your back is much better uh, from a, from like a not messing up your shoulders and stuff, especially if you're a bigger guy. It's like side and back are better than, than front because you're all like splayed out. So... Like I said, I try and use my hand to keep my nose open if we're just talking about sleeping positions and then slide the face off the side of the pillow so you can tilt your pillow so it like smashes your face like this and you can breathe better. Sleeping naked for comfort and temperature, that should be self. It also helps with number three, which is only sleep in sex in the sleeping room. Eat in the eating rooms, work in the working rooms. Ideally, you can separate the types of activities that you're doing in the room because you will carry over the anxiety of the activities that you do in that room. They will anchor the room for you. Now you're like, what if I go in a hotel and I work and I sleep and I fuck and I eat all in the same hotel room? Short term, long term, 80 20. If you're doing it for the short term, it happens. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But like long term, if we're going to make a habit so that we can increase our overall effectiveness, then it's worth doing. All right, or, 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 or delineating, excuse me. If you can have an orgasm before bed, sleeping naked helps doing that too. And it does improve your quality of sleep, which is great. Which for so have a partner with you, right? Go orgasm together, play with a friend. All right, number five, taking a hot shower or a bath before bed. Decreases internal body temperature. When you get out of it, you fall asleep faster because the decrease in core temperature induces sleep. Makes sense, right? Cool. Meditate for a few minutes. I don't do this. I'm going to cover all the stuff that I do in a second, but for some people, they like it a lot, so do it. And try and unwind before you sleep. Like if you got something you can do, if you read a book, whatever, I don't think that working all the way until the moment you sleep is good. For me personally, I pretty much stop working after dinner. So I work until dinner and then that's after I eat, I'm pretty much done. So just people ask me all the time. So that's the answer. All right. And so um, everything that I just said, I do, except for the screens off thing, I'm not perfect. And um, I don't do the, the hot shower before bed or the meditation either. And that is uh, because I haven't had any issues with sleeping. But if you are one of these people, like do more of that stuff and then you can start removing the things that are like have the lower input for you, right? Bottom line, if you're an entrepreneur, and you're trying to make more dollars and you want to have lower emotional reactivity when you have a higher quality of decisions, higher intelligence, higher ability to learn, less, more adaptability in general, sleeping is important. The beliefs that I shared at the beginning are the things that have served me well. These environmental traits, the intake differences and the habits that I mentioned are the things that have served me well. And I wanted to put them all in one video so that I would never have to answer the question again besides saying, watch this video. This covers everything that I know about sleeping that I do in my real life. For everyone else, go to sleep or watch the next video. And like I said, Mosey Nation, love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.